It's a new month, new deals, new glorious lens flares. Starting things off right with a snare. Should be a quick flip, assuming it's in good condition. It looks a little dusty in the photos. It looks like old forgotten about dust, not old neglected dust. So uh, the photos on the listing were pretty horrible. And I asked for more photos and he sent even worse photos. So hopefully it's in good shape. So let's go check it out. Here she is, the Pearl Dust Snare. This is a Pearl Soprano 12 by seven. Yeah, the heads are completely shot. The snare side head, the rim is like below the shell. That is cranked. This dust needs to be eliminated and it's missing the air vent. The guy told me that this hole is how you mount this drum to a drum set. I have all sorts of extra air vents, but this is a 5 8 of an inch hole. All the ones I have are for half inch holes, but DFD sells these air vents for like a dollar, but shipping is like six dollars, so I might just wait until I need to buy other stuff from there and combine the shipping. Like I said, more lens flares, but I just bought this Grand Star, which you probably can't see, but this is the third Grand Star I've owned. After the second one, I told myself no more power times because they're kind of too big and annoying to deal with. But this was a good price. I should be able to sell it, make a decent profit off of it. The first one I bought, I paid $90 for, but it was in rough shape. It had been rewrapped and was missing some parts. But I traded that kit and a snare for another kit and a snare. The second one, I paid $300 for it, and I flipped it for six. But that color was a bit more rare than this one. These are pretty common, but still I should be able to make some money off it. So let's get it home and check it out. All right, here they are. These are Grand Star 2s, actually. I didn't say that in the car. The other Grand Stars that I owned were just original Grand Stars. So these were the newer ones made in like the 90s and the late 80s. Uh, but you can tell the difference between them because these have the connecting lugs, the big lugs, and also they switch the mounts for the toms and the floor tom legs, but they're the same shells just a little bit different hardware. But this kit is in really great shape. There's no bubbling on the wrap. There's no scratches or anything really. The heads are definitely used. They're, the the 12 inch is missing a few lug screws. You can see right there. There's missing like two or three on there, but that's the only drum that's missing any. Um, and then also the hoop on the bass drum is a little bit scuffed. And to be honest, I probably won't even set these up to play them. They'll probably go straight on the reverb. All right, I just sold this hi-hat stand for a whopping $80. I probably could have got more, but the footboard's painted white and also the uh, the clutch is missing. And also I have two other Iron Cobras, so I don't need three. So this is getting shipped out. One tip if you're getting into shipping things is to save boxes that you know, like, oh, hey, I can fit a cymbal stand or a hi-hat stand into this box. So I'll, I'll hold on to boxes like this. And same thing with boxes that fit like snare drums. And same thing with the packing materials. I have a whole giant box of used packing materials because it's still good and you're recycling and saving the planet a little bit. So let me pack this thing up and get it shipped out. She is all packaged up. Passes the shake test. Goodbye, hi-hat stand. All right, I have quite a journey ahead of me. Typically, I don't drive super far to buy stuff. I think the farthest I've drove was like an hour and some change to buy that Superstar kit. But today I'm going two and a half hours to buy a bass drum. So I bought those Vistalite Toms last month and I knew it would be kind of hard to find a bass drum for a good price because Amber Vistalites are super expensive to begin with. And then, you know, considering shipping, even just like a 22 inch bass drum is kind of pricey. And then to ship like a bigger bass drum that's either 24 or 26 will be even more money. And then the fact that it's acrylic, you know, people don't like shipping it. So I kind of got lucky because someone posted a 24 inch Amber Vista Light bass drum pretty close to me. I say pretty close, but again, it's two and a half hours away. So I'm going to get that. Typically, I don't drive this far to get stuff, but for this kit, this is the best deal and the closest deal that I'll find. So I figured I'll just jump on it now because if I don't, I'll just wait the rest of my life and probably won't find anything. So right now I'm about a half hour into this and I'll see you on the other side. Six hours, 310 miles later, I have this bass drum. 
This is a 24 by 14 Amber Vistalite Virgin bass drum. It's from the 70s. It has a pointy badge on it. The reissues have a round badge, but whatever. But this thing is in really good shape. This thing is like clean. There's like barely any scratches on it. It's just a little bit dusty. It does have the skinny spurs, the slide out spurs, whatever you call these things. Which, if you remember my video on the blue Vista light, these things are impossible to find. So that's good that these have these and they're not missing because just the legs themselves are like hundreds of dollars, which is insane. But these have them, so I don't have to worry about finding these. But as far as the plan for these, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with them yet. I'm definitely going to keep them for a little bit, play on them, use them in some videos. But after that, not too sure. I have very, very little invested in all these drums. So we'll see. All right, this isn't drum related, but I have all these cheap junky mics. Some of them I bought, some of them uh, just accumulated over the years. But I don't need them. Some guy's picking them up and hopefully he can put them to better use. And just like that, 50 wrinkly dollars on the table. All right, so I just sold this ride symbol on eBay. I bought this thing last year with intentions of selling it, and it finally sold. Uh, I bought this with a Ludwig stand for $80. I sold the stand for $40, and this for $70, so that's, what, $30 profit? Not that much, but still better than nothing. Also, before I packaged that thing up, I sold my 18-inch Evolution Crash locally. I bought that thing. Actually, I didn't buy it. I traded a China for that thing. This was before I even had my YouTube channel. Um, so I traded the China for it. I paid either $60 or $80 for the China. It was a HHX uh, Extreme Chinese, I think, something. I don't remember. But I traded that China for the Crash. I sold the Crash for $150, so that's a decent little profit. So I just bought these <laughs> essentially these are giant concert times they're actually uh marching duos from back in the day so they made these up to 28 inches these are 20 a 22 another 22 and then a 24 so yeah again they're essentially giant concert times they're stainless steel my thought is either to sell them or convert them into bass drums because there are edges on both sides of the uh, the shell. So I might do that. I might sell them. I posted them on Instagram. A few people seem interested. So I'll see what kind of interest there is. And if I can sell them all, that would be awesome. If not, I might keep one or two and either put floor tom legs on it or turn it into like a coffee table or something. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I bought these. Inside of this tube is the wrap that came off of the Fiber Star Floor Tom. Surprisingly, it came off in one piece. And sure, I could keep it and maybe I'll use it down the road, but it's better off going to someone that needs it. So I decided to let it go. I was told to pay shipping. Uh, I made $3 off of this because I quoted the shipping $3 high. So yeah, it's going to someone else that can actually use it. All right, so I just sold some paper for $20. Easy money. Now, I cut out a bunch of lug gaskets for these Ludwig Classic lugs, as well as the Mini Classic lugs in that envelope ready to ship out. So, uh, yeah, if you need lug gaskets made out of cardstock, let me know. I might be able to hook you up and get you at a fair price. So, yeah, 20 bucks in my pocket. All right, it is the end of February. It's leap day, actually, so this is probably the last thing I'll post for this month. But I just sold my old interface for $150. I bought that thing new for, like, $600, I want to say, back in 2012. So, yeah, that was a huge investment for me back then. But, again, I, I've got my money's worth out of it. I use it in all my videos. I've made money off of it outside of my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I've done a few recordings with it. Nothing crazy, but enough to make it worth it. So definitely a sound investment for me, but I've moved on to bigger and better gear. But that got sold to a subscriber, actually, so that was kind of cool. He came and checked out the studio. So Wyatt, if you're watching this, uh, good luck with the interface. But yeah, that's all for this month. I guess the last thing I'll show you is the snare I bought. Did I buy it this month? I don't remember, but I started to clean it, so check it out. Okay, so I don't know if you remember how this thing looked before, but all I did was give this thing a nice dusting, and this thing is in like perfect condition. So I still need an air vent, but I thought I'll show you how this thing looked 
So don't be scared of a little bit of dust because you'd be surprised what's underneath all the dust. But that's all for this month, and I'll see you next month.